All right, before we move on, let's recap really quickly. Who is our protagonist and what does he believe about the world? So Greg Ridley is 14 years old. And as we know, his dad is upset with him because he is not taking school seriously. Now, why is this so important to Greg's father? Well, as he mentioned, he had to drop out of school at 13, right? And so that has some impact on what his father believes and values. And right now, Greg and his father do not value the same things. Greg wants to be able to play basketball without worrying about his grades. And he is currently in trouble. And that is why he is in an abandoned house. He doesn't want to go home and face his father in the lecture that he might get because he wasn't studying. So now Greg has met Lemon Brown, right? And like I said, we're going to be looking for mentor characters that can give advice or guidance to our protagonist. And right now, the only other character that's been introduced is Lemon Brown. So we can assume that he might be our mentor character. Now, Lemon Brown is a homeless man. So what kind of, what kind of advice can we expect him to give Greg? So let's read on and pay close attention to what Lemon Brown says and does. Okay. Greg listened and he heard a noise outside. He looked at Lemon Brown and saw the old man was pointing toward the window. Greg went to the window and saw three men, neighborhood thugs on the stoop. One was carrying a length of pipe. Greg looked back toward Lemon Brown, who moved quietly across the room to the window. The old man looked out, then beckoned frantically for Greg to follow him. For a moment, Greg couldn't move. Then he found himself following Lemon Brown into the hallway and up darkened stairs. Greg followed as closely as he could. They reached the top of the stairs and Greg felt Lemon Brown's hand first lying on his shoulder, then probing down his arm until he finally took Greg's hand into his own as he crouched in the darkness. These bad men, Lemon Brown whispered. His breath was warm against Greg's skin. Hey, rag man, a voice called. We know you in here. What you got up under them rags? You got any money? Silence. We don't want to have to come in and hurt you, old man, but we don't mind if we have to. Lemon Brown squeezed Greg's hand in his own gnarled fist. There was a bang banging downstairs and a light as the men entered. They banged around noisily, calling for the rag man. We heard you talking about your treasure, the voice was slurred. We just want to see it, that's all. You sure he's here? One voice seemed to come from the room with the sofa. Yeah, he stays here every night. There's another room over there. I'm going to take a look. You got that flashlight? Yeah, here, take the pipe too. Greg opened his mouth to quiet the sound of his breath as he sucked it in uneasily. A beam of light hit the wall a few feet opposite him, then went out. Ain't nobody in that room, a voice said. You think he's gone or something? I don't know, came the answer. All I know is I heard him talking about some kind of treasure. You know, they found that shopping bag lady with that money in her bags. Yeah, you think he's upstairs? Hey, old man, are you up there? Silence. Watch my back, I'm going up. There was a footstep on the stairs, and the beam from the flashlight danced crazily along the peeling wallpaper. Greg held his breath. There was another step and a loud crashing noise as the man banged the pipe against the wooden banister. Greg could feel his temples throb as the man slowly neared them. Greg thought about the pipe, wondering what he would do when the man reached them, what he could do. Then Lemon Brown released his hand and moved toward the top of the stairs. Greg looked around and saw stairs going up to the next floor. He tried waving to Lemon Brown, hoping the old man would see him in the dim light and follow him to the next floor. Maybe, Greg thought, the man wouldn't follow them up there. Suddenly, though, Lemon Brown stood at the top of the stairs, both arms raised high above his head. There he is, a voice cried from below. Throw down your money, old man, so we won't have to bash your head in. Lemon Brown didn't move. Greg felt himself near panic. The steps came closer, and still Lemon Brown didn't move. He was an eerie sight, a bundle of rags standing at the top of the stairs, his shadow on the wall looming over him. Maybe, the thought came to Greg, the scene could be even eerier. Greg wet his lips, put his hands to his mouth, and tried to make a sound. Nothing came out. He swallowed hard, wet his lips once more, and howled as evenly as he could. What's that? As Greg howled, the light moved away from Lemon Brown, but not before Greg saw him hurl his body down the stairs at the men who had come to take his treasure. There was a crashing noise.